During cockpit preparation, the only check associated with the flight controls is to ensure that all flight control computers are in the lights out configuration. Notice that before engines start, the bank angle protection indicators are displayed in amber on the PFD. The side sticks are inoperative because there is no hydraulic power. Moving the side sticks will not affect the control surfaces. The side sticks become operable after first engine start, as soon as hydraulic power is available. On the ground, the control surfaces respond in direct relationship to movements of the side sticks. This is the ground mode. After engine start, the ground spoilers are armed by pulling up on the lever. A white band appears around the base of the speed brake lever. A green memo, ground spoilers armed, also appears on the engine warning display, indicating that the spoilers are now armed. Next, the rudder trim is zeroed by pushing the reset push button. Reset the rudder trim. The trim is now reset to zero. This is checked on the rudder trim panel. It can also be seen on the ECAM flight control page via a blue line displayed below the rudder scale. Note the rudder trim switch and the reset button are disabled when an autopilot is engaged. The takeoff memo normally appears during taxiing. The flaps should be set to their takeoff position, 1 plus F, 2, or 3. While the flaps are deploying, we will be looking at their indications on the EWD. As soon as a flap selection is made, blue markers appear on the engine warning display to show the selected flap and slat positions. A blue number shows which flap position has been selected, here 3. The word flap appears in blue. Also, as soon as a flap selection is made, the current flap and slat position green markers move. The green labels S and F appear. When the flaps and slats have reached their selected positions, all position indications turn from blue to green. The word flap changes from blue to white. The flaps takeoff memo on the EWD turns to green. Takeoff trim is set manually using the trim wheels. The pitch trim values are indicated on the scales beside the trim wheels. The takeoff trim has to be in the green range. The pitch trim position set may be seen on the ECAM flight control page during the flight control check when taxiing if required. The after start sequence for flight controls is complete. When the flaps are extended, the ailerons are drooped by about 5 degrees in order to increase lift. The aileron indices are now pointing to a small white square, which represents the new neutral position. A flight control check is completed at a convenient stage while taxiing. On the PFD, the combined side stick deflection indicator is displayed as a white cross. The cross only indicates side stick deflections and does not indicate control surface position. Now that the aircraft is hydraulically powered, the green tick marks for bank angle protection have also appeared, indicating the aircraft is in normal law. As it is not possible to see the flight control surfaces from the cockpit, the reaction to side stick or rudder pedal movement is monitored on the ECAM flight control page. The page is automatically called when either of the side sticks or either of the rudder is moved.
The captain normally checks his side stick first, while the first officer checks for proper indications on the PFD and flight controls page. We will start the flight control check with the elevators by moving the side stick to its full back position. Move the side stick. The first officer checks that the elevators have moved to their full up position. Move the side stick fully forward. The elevators have now moved to their full down deflection. Move the side stick back to neutral. With the side stick neutral, ensure that the elevators have returned to the neutral position. The flight controls are working in pitch. We will continue by checking the roll control. Move the side stick full left. You can see on the ECAM that the left aileron has moved fully up. The right aileron has moved fully down. The roll of spoilers on the left wing have extended. Move the side stick full right. Now you can see that the left aileron is fully down, the right aileron is fully up, and the right roll of spoilers are extended. Move the side stick back to neutral. With the side stick neutral, ensure that the ailerons have returned to the neutral position and the spoilers are back in their stowed position. Now we will check the rudder. Before testing the rudder pedals, you need to press and hold the rudder pedals disconnect button on the nose wheel steering handle to prevent any unwanted steering inputs. Press the pedal disconnect button. Push the right rudder pedal. The rudder has moved to its full right deflection, so you should now push the left rudder pedal. Push the left rudder pedal. The rudder has moved to its full left deflection, so the pedal should be returned to their neutral position. The rudder has returned to the neutral position. Now the pedal disconnect button should be released. After takeoff, the direct relationship between the side sticks and the control surfaces, ground mode, is gradually blended into the flight mode. In flight mode, the pilot, using his side stick, will set an aircraft attitude. With the side stick released, the flight control computers will maintain this attitude. When the autopilot is engaged, the side sticks stay in the neutral position and the rudder pedals remain stationary. There is no control feedback. Side loading on the sticks is increased to prevent inadvertent disconnection of the autopilot. You are above acceleration altitude with the airspeed increasing. At or above F speed, minimum speed for flap retraction, the flaps can be retracted directly to flap 1. Retract the flaps to 1. Flap 1 is now set. Notice both slats and flaps are extended to the first position. This is 1 plus F configuration. The airspeed is increasing through S speed, minimum speed for slat retraction. Flap 0 would normally be selected at this stage. To demonstrate automatic flap retraction, we will delay this action. At 210 knots, the flaps will automatically retract to zero. 
there was no automatic slat retraction, therefore the slats remain in position 1. This is called configuration 1. Now retract the slats. Slats and flaps are now retracted, flap 0. This is confirmed on the EWD. Notice that the slat flap indications have been simplified. With all devices retracted, note that the slat flap indication has changed to a simple wing symbol. During descent, the speed brake may be used to increase the rate of descent to correct the flight profile from above or to slow down. To use the speed brakes, you must first press down on the speed brake lever, which is spring-loaded into the retract position. The speed brake lever can now be moved rearwards to any position, depending on the amount of drag required. On the 320, with the autopilot engaged, the maximum speed brake deflection available is approximately half, even with the speed brake lever moved fully back. The speed brake retraction rate is reduced when flying at high speed. The 319 will allow full speed brakes even with the autopilot connected since the full speed brake deflection is approximately one half that of the 320. Move the lever to the one half position. The ECAM wheel page has been called up to show you the speed brake indications. The indications are also shown on the ECAM flight control page. If the speed brakes are extended and there is some power on at least one engine, the speed brake message will flash amber. Retract the speed brake. The spoiler retraction can be confirmed on the EWD by the absence of the speed brake memo message. We have activated the approach for you. The airspeed decreases below the maximum speed for flap extension, or VFE, shown on the speed tape by amber dashes. Select flap 1. Notice that an airborne selection from flap 0 to flap 1 deploys the slats only. You cannot select flaps 1 plus F from flap 0 in the air. The speed has now decelerated to below VFE for flaps 2. Select flap 2. Flap 2 is set. At this point, before flap 3 is selected, we have lowered the landing gear for you. Arm the spoilers. The ground spoilers are armed, which can be confirmed on the engine warning display. Notice that as the landing gear is down, and as we are below 1500 feet AGL, the landing memo has appeared. Since we are below VFE, flaps 3 can be selected. Select flaps 3. Flaps 3 are set. The normal configuration for landing is full flaps. Flaps 3 are used only under abnormal circumstances. Select full flaps. Full flaps are set and the airspeed is stable at B approach, the final approach speed. The aircraft is now fully configured for landing as confirmed by the green landing memo on the EWD. Passing 50 feet, the flight control computers memorize the aircraft attitude. At 30 feet, auto trimming stops and the computers slowly introduce a nose down attitude. To counteract the nose down tendency, the pilot gently pulls back on the stick, thus flaring the aircraft. Springs inside the side stick mechanism provide the stick loading as the pilot flares.
At touchdown, with the main landing gear compressed, the ground spoilers deploy automatically as soon as the throttles are at idle or reverse. Spoiler extension can be monitored by the pilots on the ECAM wheel page. Note, if only one main landing gear is compressed, the ground spoilers will extend partially, thereby decreasing the lift and allowing the other main to touch down. Ground spoilers will then deploy fully. If a go-around is performed, the ground spoilers will automatically retract when the power is applied. Mm -hmm.